Hey guys, Nikki here from Plants, Pots, and Whatnots. So after posting that video yesterday on my new Raphidophora tetrasperma cutting, um, I need, still needed more information. So I did a little more looking on YouTube. I found like three videos. They didn't give me a wide range of information. I'm needy. I need everything. I need to know exactly what I'm dealing with here. Um, <clears throat> and I just didn't find what I was looking for. That doesn't mean that the information that is currently on YouTube is bad. It is absolutely great information. Um, I just wanted more. So I went on a bit of a mission today and I did a whole bunch of research online, which actually isn't a ton. Normally when you look up anything, really a plant or whatever it might be, that you're trying to gather information on, you find all these different resources. And truthfully speaking, I didn't find a whole lot. Now, what I did find, I mushed all up, I took notes, and uh, so I'm gonna bring that here to you today in hopes that someone finds this useful. Um, I know I would have found it useful, so I'm hoping that you do too. All right, let's check it out. So, as I said, I did take notes. So, I'm not overly great at memorizing things, so I actually wrote it down. So, I'm going to try not to get too distracted from, you know, doing one of these, like my school teacher used to tell me. When you're doing a speech, you look at your audience, and you speak to your audience, and you briefly glance at your notes. Did you guys remember that? Okay. I'll do my best. <laughs> Normally, I just like to ramble. You probably haven't noticed. <laughs> okay, so this will be a little bit different for, uh, for me, so please bear with me. Okay, so <clears throat> I figured I'd just start at the beginning, the basics, and we'll kind of move into, um, you know, the actual care of the plant, uh, lighting and moisture and um, soil and all that kind of different stuff later on in the video. So if you're looking for that stuff, you're going to have to wait a second. <laughs> so um, so other names for this plant, and I did mention this yesterday. Uh, I mentioned one of them yesterday, uh, that it is referred to as the mini monstera. Uh, it is also referred to as a philodendron ginny or a philodendron piccolo. So if you hear any of those, nine times out of ten, nine and a half times out of ten, they are going to be referring to the uh, uh, tetrasperma, or Raphidophora tetrasperma. Um, so again, I mentioned this yesterday, but they are native to southern Thailand and Malaysia, whereas the, um, the Monstera are not. Now, I did mention yesterday that uh, I, I did say something to the effect that they are not in the same family at all. Uh, that's not necessarily true. They're kind of in the same family in that they're both um, aeroid. Uh, but they're not in the same genus. Okay, so just needed to correct myself there. Um, <clears throat> so as a small plant, similar to the Monstera deliciosa or your Adansani, um, they do have these beautiful fenestrations. Here is my Monstera. Oh, P.S. I know, <laughs> so I showed you one yesterday. It wasn't this big. I stopped. I stopped at the garden center on the way home and I've been eyeing this Monstera for a couple weeks <laughs> and I have no patience. I love my little Monstera Liciosa, but I wanted big and I wanted it now. So I, I bought a new one. But isn't it gorgeous? Look at this. And we got all kinds of new leaves growing in. Oh my Lord. Anyway, totally sidetracked. Okay. So Similar to the Deliciosa and the Adansani, um, it does start out with um, leaves that, are, that don't have any fenestrations. Um, as it gets older and matures, it does start to develop the fenestrations. Now, again, similar to the Monstera, um, if it does not have the proper lighting, um, the proper soil requirements and humidity and that kind of thing, it's going to grow more slowly. Um, you're not going to notice the fenestrations. Um, it will just continue to produce 
um, you know, one or two holes maybe, or I mean, it might not at all. It might just have the, the plain leaves without the holes. And I mean, really, let's be honest, that's the only reason this plant is as cool as it is because it has all these really neat holes, very unique looking. That's why this plant is so popular um, or these plants in general. Um, okay, so I went off on a tangent there. <clears throat> Um, so these plants are fairly reasonably easy to care for. Um, that is why they are so wildly popular right now. Um, so you basically care for them very similarly to the way that you would care for your Deliciosa. Um, they're almost identical in that respect. Flipping my notes. Okay, so let's get into lighting. Um, so the uh, Rifidophora tetrasperma, likes bright indirect light um, if it gets too much uh, direct light if you've got it right out a window uh, if you've got it outside the leaves are much thinner um, so I've got my little cutting here so the leaves on this guy are very uh, fairly thin whereas the deliciosa leaves are a little thicker now having said that you don't want to place your deliciosa right in bright direct light either um, what will happen is the leaves will burn, they'll start to turn yellow, your plant will not be happy. <laughs> um, so again, as I mentioned in regards to lighting, um, the more bright indirect light that they have, the faster they will grow and the more quickly you'll get the beautiful fenestrations that everyone is searching for. Okay, uh, so let's move on to watering. So. The Tetrasperma does like um, to stay fairly moist. Now, having said that, don't drown your plant. If you're an overwaterer, I mean, you're not gonna you're not gonna benefit from overwatering. That will actually kill a plant, almost any plant, the fastest. That is like the number one uh, cardinal rule for any plant is don't overwater it. So. <clears throat> sorry so what you want to do is wait until the first like one to two one and a half to two inches of soil are dry and then water it um, I personally have I think I have three of them actually uh, the moisture meters and it is simply just a little stick and you stick it down into the soil because let's be honest if you have a plant in a massive pot like this you're not getting your fingers all the way down there to feel if the soil is moist or not so do yourself a favor, go on Amazon, that's where I got mine. They were super cheap. Um, I think I got two of them in a pack and they're so helpful. Totally saving my rear end because I'm an over -carer. And by over -carer, I mean I water my plants too much. So I am working on correcting that. I have not actually killed any plants by doing this. Oh, that's not true, okay. I've killed a couple succulents by doing that, but we live and we learn. We make mistakes and we learn from them and then we move on and don't make the same mistakes again. Okay, rambling. So, um, they especially like to stay um, moist during their growing season, which is typically spring, summer, and fall. Uh, you wanna cut back on the water in the winter um, when it's not the growing season, um, the moisture isn't absorbed enough through the roots at that point because the plant doesn't need the water to, to push out a whole lot of new growth as it would in its growing season. Uh, so it will actually cause root rot. So please be mindful of that. Um, where was I? Um, oh, so as far as the, um, actually we'll get to the soil. We'll get to the soil in a minute. I'm just going to skip down. Um, so kind of going along with watering um, is your humidity and your temperature. So um, the, the Deliciosa as well as the uh, Tetrasperma likes what we like. So if it's a decent temperature in your house, um, it will like that. So you're talking like, you know, 20 to 25 degrees. Uh, it's not too cold. It's not too warm. Um, uh, in regards to humidity, it can tolerate normal household um, humidity, which typically ranges between like 30 and 40 percent. However, it will do much better and it much prefers a higher 
uh, humidity level. So you're looking at, you know, 50 to 60, somewhere in that range, um, and it will do a lot better with those conditions. Okay, um, so soil. It does like a chunkier, well-draining soil. Um, so I usually make my own soil. So I have a mixture of coco coir. Um, I use a little bit of miracle Grow potting soil. Um, I personally use perlite, um, but that's because it's more readily available where I am. I find it hard to get my hands on pumice and um, you know coco bark and all, all these other things. But whatever you choose to use, is great. You can even use um, broken down pieces of styrofoam because really what you want is just aeration in the soil. Um, so whatever you choose to use, make sure that it is uh, aerated and always use a pot with drainage holes, like a decent amount of them. Okay, I bought pots the other day and not really thinking and it had like one teeny little drainage hole on the side at the bottom. I don't know how that's supposed to help me at all. Clearly I was not thinking that day. I just thought the pot was pretty. <laughs> okay, moving on to repotting. Um, so the uh, Raphidophora tetrasperma uh, does actually grow rather quickly. Um, it typically needs to be repotted at least once a year. Um, if it's got the, the perfect conditions, the right light, the right water, the right humidity, it will grow much faster than that. So you may actually even need to repot it twice a year. Depends on where you are and again, your conditions in your home or wherever, you're having, <laughs> wherever you happen to keep this. Um, also, uh, this is a climbing plant. So it does kind of vine and climb. So it absolutely will benefit from a moss pole or a trellis or something like that. Um, it's very similar to like a pothos or a trailing philodendron in that regard. Um, so once my tiny little cutting gets a little bit bigger, um, I will definitely be getting a moss pole for this guy to climb up because that's what they tend to do. You can hang them in a pot, However, they will start to stretch and look really leggy and just not nice. They're not designed, they're not in nature. They were not designed to be hanging. They were designed to climb. So we try to replicate those conditions, uh, their natural environment as much as possible. Um, so <laughs> this was the part that I was most interested in because I was in a total panic yesterday. Uh, that I had spent the money on this plant and had zero idea what I was doing. Okay, so here's what I've got on propagation. So from what I understand, they are actually fairly easy to propagate. Um, they will root in water and soil. Um, you can even root them in pure perlite, uh, coconut chips, sphagnum moss. What I did read, and <laughs> let me just show you this first. This is so sad. You're totally not allowed to judge me. I put it in a fish bowl. At this point, I didn't know what else to do, so I tossed the rest of the sphagnum moss in there with it. So this poor little guy is just sitting in here. Okay. No more judging. Okay, so what I actually did read is that these particular plants tend to grow and uh, develop roots more slowly when propagated in water. So guess what I'm doing directly after I finish uploading this video? I'm going to take my perlite and I'm going to take my sphagnum moss and I have worm castings which are fantastic as well. I'm going to throw those in there. Um, and I'm going to actually put this guy in soil because all that's going to happen is I'm going to start to panic thinking it's dead if it's not growing like I'm used to. <laughs> okay. Um, I think I've pretty much covered everything that I could find. Um, if you have more information or something that I missed, or if there's something else that you're interested in um, knowing about, I'm all down for doing research. I like to do it. It's fun. Um, so shoot any uh, comments to me. Let me know what you want to see, if there's any particular plant that I can spotlight for you, and we can do like a wide range of care tips and all that kind of thing. 
I am more than happy to do that. Let me know what you want to see. Okay, guys. Well, I hope you found that uh, at least semi-useful. I actually got a lot out of doing that research, um, but I hope this gives you a little bit of an idea and makes you feel a little bit more comfortable um, when you're purchasing a, a cutting or if you get a rooted plant or whatever. Um, I feel much better about it now. <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And again, thank you so much for all the love and thank you for subscribing. It definitely helps out our channel. Um, and I love all the comments. I definitely read them. I try to respond to all of them. Although at this point, the channel is rather new. So there haven't been a whole lot of comments, but I will do my best effort to respond to as many as I can. Okay, guys, have a great night. Mwah.